How many seats can we actually get in here? And uh, if we move the shrine of the sound booth in the back, we probably could get another 20 uh, in there. Uh, and if need be, we can open up the back doors and then we could do another 100 in the other room, which is really, really fun. Uh, but the Lord really laid something on my heart that uh, I want you to look at making disciples different today. And uh, we're going to have some fun with it. So let's just open up in prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. Uh, man, I'm excited to be able to bring it. Lord, I thank you that you make it clear and, and precise for each person that hears us. And Father, that we are supernaturally attentive today. Father, those that are tired have a burst of energy drink like they've never had before. Father, we thank you that we do have ears to hear, that our hearts are open. And Father, we ask you to put a deposit in uh, that is a deposit that lasts in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, so, Lord, gave me a different outlook on church, and I'm hoping to fill uh, maybe a new thought for you, a different outlet for church. And uh, so... Everybody, if you've been a believer for any length of time, you've heard of the Great Commission. Yeah. And in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, and uh, we'll go through that. Uh, if you've been a Christ follower, I'll just read it. Now, the guys in the back, I didn't give them the scriptures on purpose. And the reason is I want you to get your word out. So get your Bible out, get your Bible app out, uh, U version, whichever one you love, because I want you to highlight some things there. Because this will be a foundation today of where we're going in 2023. This isn't a Vision Sunday or anything like that. This is just real fundamental about making disciples. Uh, so, yeah, it, it, in this server today, it's how to, it, it went, there we go, how to grow uh, me in 2023. And it's Rudy Fruity, uh, which is just so fun. Uh, so in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, it says this, and I'm reading out of the New King James. It says, and Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. And what does it say in verse 19? We don't have it up yet. But we're doing Matthew 28, 18 through 20. It says, go therefore and make disciples. Is that tripped anybody else up? How do you go and make disciples? I mean, do we actually travel to the streets and we do evangelism, street evangelism? That's one way. But is it forefront in our mind that every time I get up every morning, I make disciples? I'm an endless disciple maker. Man, I am so good at making disciples. Jesus is probably high-fiving up and talking about me all the time, right? You know, he's saying, man, I love that Dwan down there. He's killing it for making disciples, which is really good. He says, go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I like verse 20. What are we supposed to do? We're to teach them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And here's what's so amazing about it. You have all things that he's commanded you in your hand. That's the word. Powerful. And he says, teach them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And then he says, amen. So I want you to start pondering some questions. How do we make disciples? And I'm just going to throw out these thoughts. These are rhetorical, so you don't have to answer right now. We'll have some, some fun with that later. How do we know if we've actually made a disciple? You know, we look at someone and say, he's a disciple. How would we know if that happened? Is there a point that we look at someone and we say, they're a disciple now? I'm going to give you some keys or some indicators or some tools today that you'll know if you made a disciple. Uh, how about this? Is there a matrix or a gauge that we can use from the Word? And it's going to be related to Rudy Fruity, but uh, in the Word that we can go, we are a disciple-making machine disciple making machine i want you to look to your left or right do you see any chairs open you will have the full capability this week to fill four or five of those this isn't by faith brother this is you stepping out and making it happen oh you got me rolling you know we've done by faith all the time i mean we pray in our prayer call father god send a hundred new converts to us well that's an old term isn't it converts uh wow that came back from my 1965. Wow. Anyway, you know, it, there's a time for the church. We want to pray and believe God by faith, but then there has to be action that makes it happen. And uh, we are one year away from 200 people. And you're going to get my heart on why we need 200 people. It's not because I can walk to other pastors. And the first question pastors ask pastors, how many people you have at your church? 
Are you talking about would it actually come or actually say that <laughs> we're the church? Uh, that means nothing. I don't even know why I went there. Anyway, okay. This is what the Lord said. As believers, we've been taught to be fruit inspectors. But when you're making disciples, we should be root detectors. I want you to think through this. We're going to have a lot of fun with this. It's going to be a lot of fun. But there's nothing wrong with examining fruit because we don't judge people, but we can judge the content of their heart. That's what the word says, right? But when you're making disciples, what's coming out of them is not fruit are not godly fruit anyway. So what we want to judge, instead of being fruit inspectors with uh, new converts or people that are just seeking the Lord, we want to be fruit, I mean, root detectors. We want to find out how deep is their root in the Lord. And when we make disciples, what we're doing is we're creating deep, deep, deep roots. I'm going to get ahead of myself because I just want to say it. Uh, people that research trees often talk about a deep tap root. You know, it's possible for a oak tree to have a 170 foot tap root, 170 feet straight down, and it does so much. It makes them anchored. So uh, a lot of times you won't see them topple over in a strong one. They hand str- they hold strong. Uh, so we have been fruit inspectors. Maybe we should be root inspectors. So I want you to start thinking of the church differently. So we don't judge them when we come in. We establish root within them when they come. So really good. Amplify uh, in, uh, there we go. In Matthew 13, I just want to read uh, a parable. It says, this is, on the same day Jesus went out of the house, it was sitting beside the sea, but such great crowds gathered about him that he got to get into a boat and remained sitting there, and while all throngs stood on the shore, he told them many things in parable stories uh, by way of illustration and comparison, saying, a sower went out to sow. I love this story. Sower went out to sow. Uh, And as he sowed, some seed fell on by the roadside, and the birds came, ate the seed. Have you heard this one? You know, if you've been a believer for any length of time, we've heard the, uh, this story. Verse 5, it says, Other seed fell on rocky ground where they had not much soil, and at once they sprang up because they had no depth of soil. I want you to really watch the words as we go because I'm going to pull some things out at the end. And the verse says, says, But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and because they had no root, what didn't they have? No root. What did verse 5 say? Other seed fell on rocky ground where they had not much soil. So, so far we've seen out of two, they've had no soil that was good, climate controlled for growth. And the next verse tells us they had no root. So when we're making disciples, we create good soil and we create deep roots. We'll get there. It's going to be good. So when the sun rose, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they dried up and withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them out. I like verse 8. Other seed fell on what? Good soil. And yielded grain, some a hundred times, and much as was sown, some sixty times as much, and some thirty. So I want to ask some questions. Was the sower the same through all the sowing with the four different categories. Was the seed the same? So that tells me that the Lord or us, we're sowing seed. It's the ground that makes the difference. It is. Um, So the seed was the same as well. What was the difference between verse 8 and the rest? In verse 8, what was there? Other seed fell on good soil. I want you to start thinking of the church as a community garden. Community garden. I'm going to make this easy for you, how to grow a church and make disciples. Uh, At our church, we were raised, I was raised Baptist, Southern Baptist. We don't want to get that wrong now uh, when it comes to that. So uh, anyway, we might not have had the fullness of the gospel of what we look at right now, but we were a salvation machine. We were able to get people saved like crazy because we knew the word and we did the work. So we made it happen. When roots run deep, you will see the fruit you seek. So when you're looking at someone on the job site and they use the F word, every other word doesn't phase me in the least. 
What I need to do is change the root. I change the environment. I change the soil. And I'm going to show you how a tree grows really well. If I don't keep running, we'll be here for an hour. So, so vital is the connection between root and fruit. You cannot have one without the other. It's so true. In John 15, and I'll just read starting with uh, verse 4, and we'll just stay there. It says, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Here's what I've noticed, and I'll just say this. Social media has done the church a terrible disjustice. Everybody thought it was the coolest thing through COVID that, man, we're just going to go live. There's no depth there. There's no soil there. Because while you're fixing eggs and bacon, trying to watch the TV, and your kids are yelling and screaming, there's something about putting your feet in a church where the soil's prepared for you to grow. And then once, once we prepare you as disciples to go out, the soil travels with you. Is that not the coolest thing? Oh, God's so good. Can I make a suggestion? Just a suggestion. Maybe we've been looking at the wrong thing. Our focus has been looking for fruit. Maybe making disciples will be accomplished by establishing strong roots, and the fruit will take care of itself. This is what I've heard from a lot of people with church. You judge me when I come in. I don't feel comfortable the way that I am. Oh, come on in. Because I'm going to teach you that we are transplanters. We take someone from an unhealthy environment and we transplant them into an environment where they'll flourish. Man, it happens every time uh, that we do this. Deep roots. Tree researchers tell us that roots will be healthy and grow if three things are available. And these are in the Word. I thought this was so cool. Can you guess any of the three? What three things need to be present? Water. Sun. Nutrients. Those two aren't one of them, but they're very good and necessary. No, they are. Uh, what does a tree need? What does a tree produce for us? Oxygen. They need pure oxygen. The third thing they need is good soil. If you can provide this now... Kim's better than me. I'm a plant killer. Man, I, I water them. I give them good soil. I even talk to my plants. You're such a great plant. You bring me so much joy. And my poor, my poor avocado plant back there, it just didn't make it. Most trees are capable of growing deep roots, but root architecture they actually have people that do plant root architecture is strongly influenced by soil and climate control. And listen to this. Trees are completely influenced by their environment. Can I tell you this? People are completely influenced by what? Their environment. So don't come against a person. They've been raised differently than us. You know, I sat with a guy and he's telling me how great God is. With every F word that goes through, and I think, man, there we go. Bring it, brother. And uh, did I correct him? No. But the environment he came from, well, that was normal. Because that's how his parents talked. That's how all of his friends talked. And no one's taught him that really is that God honoring. That's not a heaven or hell issue, just so you know. Not a heaven or hell issue. Once again, deep roots, 170 feet deep. If your roots are really deep, you won't be phased as much by calamity that comes your way. But for people that don't have deep roots, like your work associates, and they don't know the Lord, man, they're rocked. That's why negativity is so big on the workplace. I mean, if you sit down with anybody at lunch on your work, watch what comes out first. They generally don't talk about all the positives in their life or all the things that's going well. They talk about all the negative that's happening. Can you believe it? They asked me to come in an extra hour this week instead of saying, I am so blessed to have a job. Man, I tell you what, it's a good job. It's a God-given job. So it's all mindset. <laughs> Here's what's really cool, and I'll get to the board here in a minute. The church, we prepare a location where soil is rich. 
The water is plentiful and oxygen is pure. And you know what? It affects a change. So when people come into a full gospel church that's pre preaching the word, you know, they're going to come in and I often hear this. There's something different in the environment here. Well, I can tell you what that is. We've prepared the soil for you to come. And when last night when we put these chairs out, I came in, and I laid hands on them. Yeah. And I just said, transplant, what a victory. Yeah. And I went to the transplant, what a victory. And it encouraged me that uh, you would hear today that the church is declining. I don't believe that's true. I believe Jesus is still Jesus, and the power is still the power. He's still changing lives, but it does require some cooperation from his followers to make it happen. We transplant new Christ followers from one climate to another climate. Oh, this is going to get good. <laughs> In this environment... We do this. We provide others to encourage growth. So when we bring someone into church that's not churched, we surround them. We love on them. We don't say, well, brother, we don't, we don't talk that way in church. We don't do that. Tell you what, if you clean yourself up a little, people, you'd have more friends. Tell you what, if you weren't so needy, people would be gravitating towards you. You know what? Bring them all in. Bring them all in. I had an experience just recently that I went down to the Greyhound bus station, and I was there for eight hours. And, uh, oh, my gosh. <laughs> and the Lord dropped something in my heart. He said, these are my people. Now, these would not normally be everybody's people. And I got the privilege of working with a few people. One had a bus. It takes like 43 hours to get from New York to another location on one of these buses. So they came off, and man, we got 43 hours of stuff going on, okay? And, uh, you know, I'm helping with bags. I'm just helping. I went down, and, uh, and it was interesting to me that the Lord kept putting in my mind, he said, these are my people, transplant them. These are my people, transplant them. And, and I, I, you start to well, that's not good, good product to start with. He goes, great product to start with. He said, what better product than the people that I love? See, we go after often people that are like us, you know, that make us feel comfortable, uh, that, are, that are not too needy, won't ask me for money. Uh, God says, you know what? Those are my people. So I worked there for about eight hours, and uh, I just smiled, shook their hand, helped them with bags. And, uh, and the Lord says, you're on assignment, and the assignment's not for those individuals. The assignment's to change your heart. Wow. See, I've been around church people so long, I'm comfortable with church people. Yeah. But when it comes to people that aren't churched, how comfortable are we? Wow. You know, it's just a little bit different for me. Strong roots, much fruit. Rudy, fruity. Rudy, fruity. <laughs> and this is what the Lord said to me. The church is the soil for society. I've only got about five minutes. You guys are doing great. Uh, this is working out great. I want to set a platform for you that for this year, uh, I'm going to go after what the Lord's passionate about. And the issue is, everybody told me this when I bought this church, you're going to have so much traffic by the church. Can I tell you, I've got scarcely any people coming into the church because of traffic. But when I was in a minion suit, do you guys remember that? I had this pillow in front. I, 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 it was not pretty. And I just kept jumping on the street. And... I made a spectacle of myself, and I drew people in. Now, that pillow ended up dropping way down here, and it looked like I had a bottom up front. Everybody said that it just didn't look pretty. But the Lord said it's like that. He said, if you're waiting for them to knock your door down, they're not going to. Because the Great Commission said what? It said, go. We have the capability to completely rock the Metro East. Yeah. Capability to do this. 
Um, Josh, could you bring that board over? Or maybe a couple people grab the board and we'll bring it over. And I'll try to make it where everybody can see it. That's, oh, it's even better. Look at y'all. Okay. This is where a headset's fantastic. Just a square. Yeah. <laughs> Good. I was going to say, it's just a square. <laughs> Rudimentary church. Hey, this is really good. Here's what the Lord said to me. We don't have control of where people came from. But we definitely have control where they could go. So good. Well, thank you for that. Um, so the Lord said the church, and this is where I said we're a community garden. So what we do is we create an environment for everybody to come. And what we do is we help them establish great roots. That could be marriage. That could be relationship with kids. That could be their finances. People that riddled with sickness. Man, we're going to teach them how to be healed in Jesus' name. And the root goes way deep. Yeah. So this week I had what seemed to be a cold. And I didn't deny that I had a big cough. But I also said, I don't have time for that. So first thing I prayed against is that... Uh, I don't deny the symptoms that's in my body. I deny the right for it to be there. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I'm healed. And I was just coughing up a little bit of stuff, and I said, but that's not going to be, I guess I can beat this plate. It's not going to be yellow in tint at all. It can be completely white. It was completely white. So I walked through the process, but it didn't hinder me from doing what I needed to do. Can I challenge you? It may be time, I'm going to meddle, that if you're healed in Jesus' name, Act like you're healed in Jesus' name. Don't let the littlest thing get you down. It's so easy to stay at home. I get it. So I got up earlier, and I went and worked out this week. And I'll tell you this. Uh, it's like I dehydrated my muscles. They are so much smaller than they used to be. And uh, so I went to the gym, and I started working out. And I'm just talking about uh, the report that easily could be said is that I've got a cold. And I said, well, I'm going to believe I'm healed in Jesus' name. So what did I do? I went and worked out. So I went to the gym, and uh, the lowest setting on, on these things is 20, but they're blocked off. So I had to go up to 35. So uh, and I know if you're lifting weights, that's nothing. I get it. So I'm over there, and I'm just lifting, and the lady next to me is doing 80. And, man, I, I'm feeling really good. But I thought, I'm going to work that cold out of me. Now, I'm already healed in Jesus' name, but I'm going to do what I can do. That has nothing to do with it where we're going. So, here we go. So, as a community church, we provide three things. If a tree needs three things, and what are those three things? Oxygen. Good soil. Water. I like the sun. Without sun, you wouldn't have it, but that wasn't the three that the researchers found. I guess you can grow a tree in the dark. I don't know. So... I want you to, when we start making disciples, when you start making disciples, all you do is change the climate where you're at. You know what it starts with? No coarse joking on your job site. When they start to say a joke that's an off-color joke, I just walk away. No big deal. Hey, man, I got to get back to work. When the complaining starts, I always do this. Give me three things that was amazing that happened during that situation. And it'll stop, and they start telling me about the three things. When I hear about marriages that are failing, I say, can I tell you about mine? It's not always been perfect, but I've always pursued her. Let me tell you how I've done that. So we create an environment where they can get uh, all the nutrients they need. So when people come in the door and we look at disciples, we're not fruit inspectors. We're root detectors. That's what we do. So... Here's what's really good. What is a great commission? It's immersing them in my way of teaching. Teach them what I've taught you. So when we bring people in, we bring people in. We bring people in. Let's just keep working it because you guys aren't getting it. We, we bring people in. Who bring? You bring people in. Because as the pastor of the church, my role is to tool you to Oh, this is so good. You guys are rolling with it. We're doing better than, I won't say it. Anyway, um, bring people in. It's so easy. 
When I hear about something happening in their marriage, could I invite you some, to somewhere? I'm not going to say they have all the answers. You might not agree with everything that we talk about. Would you come to church with me? Heck no. Let me encourage you. Normally it takes 18 times statistically to get someone to come to church. And the 18th time, they're going to come to just shut you up. And I'm okay with that. So the 19th time you're counting, you're going, this is it. This is it. Oh, you're out of the norm. This is 22. The truth of it is, keep speaking. So here's what's really neat. So you're the peeps. And you do what? You, you bring people in. Not to grow the church, to make disciples. The church is still the best way to make disciples. So here's what happens. This is Reggie. Oh, I got you. You queued right in there, baby. I got you. And Reggie is a transplant expert. So Reggie, this is very sad. That's a tow truck. <laughs> Ugly. So I'm just using him as an example. So all of a sudden, he's already got a deep root. He's got oxygen. He's got water and great soil. So all of a sudden, he's on a transplant journey. He travels out in his truck. They're frustrated already. I've waited an hour for you to come. Where were you, brother? Man, I had to go to the bathroom. I know this because I've experienced this when I'm waiting for a tow truck driver. And all of a sudden, he sits in the truck with the person, and they start talking. And he says, oh, they're not a believer. I can tell by the way that they're speaking out of their mouth. But what I know is they need a different route. Yeah. So I'm going to position them to be transplanted to a location that will make deep roots. And uh, I know I'm not giving you a lot of scripture for this, but it's just real practical. So all of a sudden, how do we bring them in? We transplant them in. So all of a sudden, he goes out, and he says, tell you what, you may not come to our church, but you need to go to a church, and let me tell you what you'll gain. So all of a sudden, this is Lindsay, massaging people on fire, man. She's just making them feel super comfortable, and all of a sudden, a person confides her and says, listen, I'm really having a struggle in this area, and she says, uh-oh, it's transplant time. From their environment and their culture to God's environment and his culture. So she starts just speaking life to the person. And can I tell you this? I don't quote scripture to people when I'm first talking to them. I tell my testimony. And then the Holy Spirit does the work. Is that not so cool? So Lindsay all of a sudden realized, I got a transplant moment. I'm going to change the environment. And then what we do instead of bringing them in and making it difficult, we lead them in to a location that's for them. <laughs> Environment makes all the difference. People don't change overnight. And I'm going to wrap with this. Because I often look at people and say, you should be further along by now. You've been a believer for 15 years. Can't quote one scripture. That's okay. They're here. I just need the root to get deeper. So how do I do that? I think for each person, it's a little different. We're going to do it corporately some ways. But uh, for each person, there's going to be the unlock key. And that's what I ask for. I literally say, Lord, two things I ask. Make it easy for me. Because, man, I don't want to walk up to somebody and it's, you know, they just popped me one. And that didn't go like I planned, Lord. And then the other thing is I don't want to waste a lot of time. Because I don't have a lot of time. So what I end up doing is that, Father, give me the key to their heart. Tell me what will open up for, the, for them to talk to me. And because uh, I'm a stranger, uh, people don't change overnight. It takes time for the good soil to get in them. Uh, you know, if anybody can resurrect my avocado plants, let me know. That's great. I'm going to try some different things. But I know that nutrients take time to get up into the tree. I know that it takes time for water to get deep in the soil. God's so good. I have so much more, but I'm going to close with this. When people come in the door, 
And we're not fruit inspectors, we're root detectors. It'll change your perspective of how you look at people. Isn't that so cool? So when they come in, we're going, let's check the root. And uh, they don't raise their hands in worship. That's okay. In fact, they don't even know what we're doing. That's all right, too. Uh, We give a message and go, good Lord, you went long. That's okay. But what I'm doing is I'm sowing in, I'm creating an environment where there's oxygen, there's water, and there's soil. 96 chairs. And I'll just say this from my point. We were scaling down, scaling down, scaling down on chairs. So it felt full. I don't want you to feel full. I don't want you to feel full. I want to come in and go, I got 60 chairs I can fill. Why? Because Jesus told me to. He said, go, make disciples. And he said, the church is still the greatest thing since sliced bread. It's how it's going to happen. Uh, I'm ramshotting through some things. This is what he left me with. He said, I still change lives. He said, do you believe I change lives? God said to me, I still bring hope to the hopeless. Do you think you can bring hope to the hopeless? And I said, yeah, I can do that. God's still mending broken hearts. And then he said he cares for people. He desires people. If a church has no converts in a year, it's a waste of a building. So the Lord really arrested me and said, how many people did you get saved last year? How many people came to the Lord because of Generation Church? And I had determined not enough. So do we have a, something I can wipe this off really quick? Perfect. The communion's done. I can use the napkin. I'm going to debut this to you in phases. The Lord's given me the vision for 2023. And I'm just going to give you this. Uh, You guys are trying to figure out, what is that? (laughs) We rescue people. So the Lord gave me eight different words that's going to be our vision statement for, and I'm not debuting it right now. Uh, I'm working with my son to create the website to be able to do it. I'm working for tools that you can hand out. And the goal for me is that when people ask the vision of Generation Church, every one of you will easily be able to say. But the first word the Lord gave me was rescue. And well, I'm not lost. No, we rescue people from walks of life that they don't want to be in. We rescue people from going to hell when we want them to go to. Absolutely. We rescue people. And then, you know, I won't write them all down, uh, but restore is another one. They're all ours. Uh, And uh, we bring relief to people. We bring redemption to people. And and the Lord said, you know what? 2023 is going to be a whirlwind for you. This could be a whirlwind. Uh, Linda came to us and she said, Pastor, could you believe for five families? We've told this last week and it's going to bear repeating all the time. And uh, she said, can you believe for five saved families? And I thought, well, yeah, I can believe for five saved. Can you believe for five more unsaved people? That's 10 families. I said, yeah, I can believe for that. Can you guys believe for that? And here's what's going to happen. As you start transplanting, You're going to look across the sanctuary, you're going to go, that's my plant. I fed that plant. And that plant brought all their kids. So that's my plant family. You know what? And it's not a prideful thing, but there is such a satisfaction to do the will of the Father. So cool when he says, go make disciples, and you go, I'm doing that. And I think at the end result, when I die and I get to heaven, and he goes, the community garden was cute. He said, but you did a great job with discipling people. So gauge your life in 2023 is how many people are you transplanting into Christ? 
don't gauge whether you made more money. Money is so fleeting uh, with that. And God can get it to you a million different ways with that. Or you get a new job. Or your worth is found in some other way. I, I hope that it's in rescuing people. So uh, I didn't even do my analogy, but um, I had Barbie. I was going to plan her for you uh, and do it. But uh, I could not find any Ken dolls, unfortunately, so uh, I only had Barbie. Do you, are you thinking of any people right now? Anybody you've came in contact with, thinking of any people? Uh, while I was down at the Greyhound, I met Willie. He's been there for 24 years working there. And... Uh, He's not a believer. You never know because he, he spoke very well, no harsh language, and uh, carried himself very well. And I, I thought, uh, transplant needs a new heart. And uh, some people don't realize it, but everybody we come in contact needs a new heart. Or they're going to hell and not going to heaven. Let's pray over the word. Father, we thank you for the word today. Father, I just thank you that you... And privilege that you allow me to do it. Father, thank you for the analogy uh, that you've given us today. And Father, we say uh, yes. Uh, we make a declaration that we will transplant people into your kingdom. That Father, that we will make the choice to think of your go before our decision to do something else. Father, we ask you, I ask you right now just to amplify the word. Let it resonate within people through the week. Father, add to it. As they read the word, they say, man, this goes right in line. Father, give them scripture that they can anchor on. Father, I thank you. Send people that need to be rescued across their path. Father, and give them the words to speak when they act. Thank you, Father. Give them boldness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Yes, a boldness. Uh, anybody have anything in their body that needs to be prayed for? I don't want to leave without that. Any sickness? Right there, okay. Anybody else? Everybody's 100% whole? Good, okay. If you're not, uh, it's never too late. I just want to pray for you, with you from here. I'm not going to have you come forward. Uh, and this is what I qualify as it's something in your body. It's anything that's not God-honoring. Anything that's not God-honoring. You get up in the morning and go, oh, whoa, take me half a day. You know, not designed that way. Not designed, but we tolerate a lot. It could be that your arm's not functioning properly as it was. Maybe your sugars are out of control. I'm not sure what that is. Maybe your knees just aren't as bendy as they used to be. I understand that. But can I tell you, don't be shy. When there's a call for healing, man, believers should be the first to pop up. So I'm not trying to manufacture anything. I just find it very hard to believe with 40 people in here that you're all 100% healthy. And the only reason I want to do this is that being honest before the Lord, it's not being prideful and saying, nope, bless God, I can do it myself. Well, the corporate prayer is fantastic. So anyway, you disagree with me with the prayer, and we're going to pray for Rick and Jennifer right now. Reach your hands towards them. That's great. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. I don't know the circumstances, but I know my Father. So, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that whatever is coming against their body, Father, whatever is not God-honoring, the Word says that by your stripes we've been made healthy and whole already. So, Father, as I pray, you're affecting a change in their body right now in Jesus' name. That area that is particular that they're thinking of right now, you're affecting a change in that area right now. Father, you're restoring, rebuilding, remanufacturing whatever needs to take place. Father, if it's also something that we do, then, Father, give us wisdom and ideas how to not do that in Jesus' name. And, Father, we thank you for it in advance because by faith we pray, and as we pray, it manifests because we pray. Pray it in Jesus' name, and I'll end with this with healing. Here's what's so cool about it. You may not see the work happen, but the moment you prayed, God was on, uh, on making it happen. He, we pray he's the performer. He's not a vending machine, but he is the performer to perform what? His word. Guys, thanks for coming this morning. You're so awesome. Thanks for choosing church this morning. You guys have a blessed day. Uh, as you go to lunch, I'm going to lunch today as well. As you go to lunch, look for transplants. Bless your server. Talk to your server. So uh, you guys have a wonderful day.
a wonderful day. You guys have a wonderful day in the Lord. Thanks for coming. We love you guys. Uh, if you need anything of the church, you just let us know. I'm going to have Dr. Pam go ahead and close.